Hi, I'm Alex Howard, and in this short video, I'm here with Anne Vyshinsky, Director of Psychology at the Upton Health Clinic, and we wanted to talk a little bit about the role of psychology mm -hmm. in the work we do with our patients. Um, and you know, there's quite a lot of different videos we put together about different parts. So we thought in this video, it would be useful to do something to really just strip it back to the specific basics, as it were, of the build the approach that we use. So let's start off with the maladaptive stress response. Mm -hmm. What is that and why is it important in the work okay. that we do? So we can look at this from two angles. What we talk about a lot is the fact that it, for many people in the process of getting sick, stress has definitely been a factor. Um, we're designed to have stress to a certain degree, but stress is something that we're designed to have in short bursts. And actually for many people, if they look at the history of how they've got sick, what's actually happened is that they've had ongoing stresses over a prolonged period of time kind of building up. What that becomes is kind of a chronic state of stress. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about the maladaptive uh, stress response. Ideally, you should go into a kind of stressed fight flight state and then come straight back down into a nice healing state. What's happening, uh, or one way of looking at what's happening in, in chronic fatigue in the build-up to getting sick is that the body's being put under more and more and more pressure and essentially the, the system isn't adapting back to that healing state in the way that it should be. So that's essentially what we mean by the maladaptive stress response. There is another piece of course which is that even if you weren't stressed in the run-up to getting ill by the time you've got ill, you certainly will be. So the events of having something like chronic fatigue or ME or fibromyalgia really you know the lack of control you know sense of sort of your life falling apart very often um is, is deeply stressful as are the symptoms so very often the state that people's system is in whilst they're sick is actually the direct opposite of the state that we would want it to be in for optimum recovery so it's almost like effectively what's happening is people end up in exactly the opposite state they need to be in to heal exactly. And yet, often people don't recognise initially that they're in that state. It's probably where people may be watching this thinking, well, I'm not stressed, I'm not anxious, I'm ill. Sure. What would you say to that? Yeah, I mean, the maladaptive stress response is, is a funny thing because the idea really is that it, it happens over a prolonged period of time. So it's not that you would necessarily, although many people do recognise that there is a level of anxiety or there's a level of tension or inability to relax that is happening. And symptoms can be, you know, finding it hard to fall asleep, finding it just hard to kind of calm down, the sense of being adrenalised a lot of the time. And that's what people talk about a lot, or we hear, you know, hear patients talk about a lot. For some people it's not so obvious, um, but what's happened over a prolonged period of time is it's almost like the system has normalised this state. You get used to being wired, you get used to being driven, and actually you begin to think that that's the normal way that your body is. And in fact, your body is showing you, if nothing else, that things are not quite right um, and that the system isn't able to heal the way it should. And so with what we're talking about here with the maladaptive stress response, where does it fit contextually with other approaches that people may use? What, what, why is this piece in our experience so particularly important? Absolutely. Well for many people they, they will look at nutrition perhaps, they'll look at even sort of alternative therapies or meditation and yoga. The thing that we find is that until you can consistently calm the nervous system down, you can consistently bring yourself into what we you know termed the healing state, it's very hard for any of those things to take real effect. So for example, if we look at nutrition, one of the things that happens if the body is in this kind of constant state of stress, for example, is that digestion and absorption are really impaired. So if you're trying to put great food in and even good supplements in, but the system's in this kind of hyper state the whole time, your ability to use it isn't always going to be as good as it should be. And that can definitely impair your ability to kind of uh, take the benefits of things like nutritional therapy. Same can be true, I mean, alternative therapies, uh, meditation, yoga, obviously we're great advocates of, of meditation and yoga, but they will often calm things down temporarily rather than actually teaching you how to bring your system into a much calmer state over a prolonged period of time. So again, you know, if you learn the tools to really calm yourself down, then the yoga and then the meditation can really start to, to be you know, more beneficial, whereas on their own they often won't quite have the effect that you, you would want them to. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And so then what would be some of the tools we would use to sure. help shift that amount of construction response? We look at it in kind of uh, over sort of three levels, or our approach kind of covers sort of three levels, I would say. The first is just some basic tools to teach you how to calm your nervous system down. Um, those tools are about understanding the impact that your thinking processes have on your body, on your emotions, 
um, and, and how to shift that. So a lot of it's awareness raising and then also teaching you some real practical tools of, of how to work with that and how to change it on a moment to moment, day to day basis. We also find that that in itself uh, is a really good starting point, a very good um, uh, kind of platform, but that underneath that, if there's kind of a lot of emotion that's gone on, a lot of emotional issues perhaps from the past that, that are a bit unresolved, or even from the current that are a bit unresolved, they can kind of get in the way. Um, so some of the work that we'll do will target that and look at you know, the role of your emotions in what's happening in your body and your symptoms. Um, the third piece is really what we say, call the kind of navigation process. Even if you've got all the right tools, learning how to implement them, use them consistently and know what to do when, and navigate this kind of bumpy road that, that often recovery can be, is tricky and obviously we've, <laughs> we've done a lot of this. So we have a particular insight into what's going on and can often give some real good um, guidance as to what to use when and how to manage what's happening to get the easiest possible uh, uh, kind of yeah. results. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then in terms of some of the actual ways that we do that, what are some of the kind of treatment options, as it were, sure. that we offer? So we, um, we look at three, three treatment options, um, really, or four. I mean, the first would be something that we call the Night Day Programme, which is, I guess, our flagship, the kind of most effective way that we've found to treat. And that involves, there's two ways of doing it, but it involves kind of either coming down to the clinic and having sort of two and a half days down with us, um, and then a lot of follow-up by phone and conference call. And that's really teaching the tools and then helping embed that. Mm -hmm. What we found over time is that combination of a little bit of group time, because it's a small group, um, and really being down here with us can be very powerful, but then you also need the follow-up. You need the one-to-one -one contact time, and you need some consistency over a period of time. So that runs over 90 days. We've also recently um, come up with a, a way of doing that remotely as well. So that you get the intensity of the Night Day program, but obviously that it's something that's open for people who maybe aren't in this country or aren't quite able to travel, want something kind of a real kickstart, but can't quite make it down. And that we do through a kind of combination of video, conference calls, one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's a really good option as well. Otherwise, you can work with this by phone. We have something called the Telephone Treatment Program, which is far more kind of just one-to-one -one work and um, much more gradual approach, I suppose. Um, and, and also just you know, individual sessions as well. So those are the approaches that we, okay. we have. Okay, great. So if someone's watching this and going, okay, this sounds potentially interesting, mm -hmm. what would be the next step that someone could take? Best thing to do is have a 15 minute chat, free 15 minute chat with us. Um, we are very happy to talk to you about your own case, your own situation, how this may or may not fit for you and what's the best approach to, to take going forwards. Um, so basically you, you get 15 minutes of, of our time or 20 minutes often um, to, to really talk through what's going on and um, and really get clear on what's going to be the best best way forward for you. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, Anna. Hopefully that's been a helpful kind of whistle-stop tour, as it were, of how we work in the psychology department. If you're interested in finding out more, then please do contact us for a free 15-minute chat. Um, one of the girls in the office will talk you through a bit more about how it works, the different kind of options that may be available. And as Anna says, you can then speak to one of the psychology practitioners and ask questions about your situation. So there's various ways you can do that, which you can see on the website. So hopefully we'll have a chance to talk to you very soon.